Welcome to the ACC Panic Room alongside Lauren Brownlow. I'm Joe Obius. It's um, December 11th. Yes. Is it is it too early to worry about your favorite ACC basketball team if things haven't gotten out to a hot start? Um, I guess it depends, right? I mean, if I'm if I want to be worried because there's only a few more non-conference opportunities left, and you, not mm. everybody has good ones left either. Yeah. I think what you want to worry about is like how many quad one wins do you have? How many good wins do you have? Do you have bad losses? Like, and do you have enough time to make up for that? Are you going to have enough opportunities in ACC play to make up for that? Or do you run the risk of getting the quad four L, which I think more than two teams, I think would qualify as that in certain gyms like right now. It's See, not good. that's the problem that the one, you know, it's it, as we've discussed, as we as we transition over to basketball conversations here on the panic room, you and I, you know, we're both in agreement that like, look, it's not worth it to waste any mental bandwidth on what's going on with basketball in November and even throughout a good chunk of December. However, the ACC could do itself no favors if. As a league, they're not good again like they were last year. And Coach K took some grief for this, but he was absolutely right. I know it's it's, it's one of those classic classic situations, Lauren, where like it's the messenger, not the message. I know, and We've nobody seen that wanted, more than once with him. Nobody like, wanted to hear it from Coach K last year, but he no. was absolutely right about the league and their non conference opportunities setting it up. For bad metrics, bad numbers feeding bad numbers once you I get mean, in a conference play. You know how much I enjoy his former protege, Mike I Bray. I However, know. when I look at their schedule, I want to throw something at it. Why are you doing this? Like, what's the thing? I, I wrote a piece for WRL Sports Fan a couple days ago, catching up on ACC basketball. And yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I did? I got angry at a lot of the scheduling happening. Mm. I got a little angry at Wake Forest. Because, I'm sorry, you missed the tournament last year because you didn't schedule well enough. And what do you do this year? You don't schedule well enough. Like, now, I mean, to be fair to them, I don't know that they thought, like, an LSU would be a <laughs> not that great of a win or loss. But sure, some of that you can't account for. Sometimes you can't predict. I mean, and Notre Dame, Michigan State, I don't think you would normally think that they have an RPI or a net God, RPI. I'm still saying RPI. A net in like the hundreds, which they did, which they do. And so now mm -hmm. Notre Dame has like no quad one wins, or even I don't even think they have quad twos at the moment. And I'm just like, why do you guys do this? Like even even Clemson too. Clemson and Wake were the two that I looked at because they both had two losses. And you're like, okay, this is you guys should be higher in net than like almost in the hundreds, but you're right. not because your schedule is crap. Like just. We're not asking for much. Just like schedule some teams in the hundreds, like in the lower but, hundreds. That helps you more. Like, but there's the flip side of that. You look at NC State, right? There's a lot of pressure on Kevin Keats this season to turn things around after last year's lost season. Uh, and there's no Manny Bates discussion that you can have, even if uh, Dusan Mohorcic is out for the season. It, it, that, that, like nobody wants to hear that anymore. You look at the yeah. talent that you've got. You should be able to muster something this year. So on one hand, you give state credit because their schedule is better and they actually got decent wins after the Kansas loss. I mean, they, they played Kansas tight, but they ended up backing that up with a win against state and a win against Butler. Right. So you're like, oh, OK, state. They've got better and they've got some opportunities left, too, I think. But those opportunities, nobody's optimistic about after you start ACC play with a bad loss at home to Pitt. And then okay, that's a uh, quad one loss. It, well, basically, almost. Seriously, Pitt was seventy eight in net. And I don't see I don't see Pitt doing much in the league. If I'm wrong, we can circle back to this ACC panic room and and and. Well, you know what? They've done their job out of conference. <laughs> Jeff, they did their job to not be a terrible loss. Jeff Capel, Capel can come on the panic room and tell me I was wrong. Okay. Straight up tell me I was wrong. I invite that. We are big yes, fans he's of Jeff Cable. Yes, he, we, and Jeff knows we're big fans of him uh, on the ACC Panic Room.
But that's to me, that's a bad loss for NC State to start out the ACC play. And then you back that up with going on the road against Miami, who I think Miami's a pretty decent squad. I think and they're comparable teams, yeah. Like, they are comparable the teams. They're, they are comparable teams, especially in terms of how they're set up. And the one thing about NC State, and I guess the frustration that Wolfpack fans are going to have throughout the season, is that it's essentially the same team, just new parts. They have to out, like, this is going to sound really stupid. They have to outscore you. It's like the, it's the classic Herb Sendek. You can beat a team one of two ways. You can either score more points to them, or you can keep them from scoring more points than you, right? And we know that this NC State squad is not going to keep you from scoring more points than you. So you're going to have to go out there and keep it hot, which is what they did in the first half. Miami adjusted. And it was basically a one-man show the rest of the way, and NC State could not keep up. Yeah, a lot, and, of, a lot of bad shots down the stretch, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean... But that's, that's State, though. That's State. That's State at this point. And, and, you know, the big man rotation, I guess, leaves some cause for concern. And I think you almost can look at State in two different ways. It's like with Manny Bates and without him since, and, and what they've looked like without him since. and, and but no one yeah. wrong. You adjust after that. You adjust after that. And I get I know. I get that they those had a guys, guy. I think those big guys are going to be – some of them are going to be good. But it's yeah, just going to take them some – it's going to take them a little bit of time. Yes. Bit. Yes, it should. But you know what, though? Like, you know, you talk about well, opportunity. You talk about opportunities in the ACC, and I'm thinking to myself, do they have opportunities in the ACC? We'll see. I don't know. They have some. The, league is setting up. the thing is, for State, it's not so much the opportunities. Like, we've seen them beat Virginia when Virginia's been yeah. good and State's yeah. been more. You know, we've seen them beat Duke, you know? Mm-hmm. Sometimes they've beaten Carolina. They have. It's happened. I've seen it. I know. Um, I was gonna say I, I I texted you I texted you last night and you're like it's and like it's a wrap and you're like no I'm like I'm like who are they gonna beat at this point based on what we've seen but, but their RPI they're, God, their, RPI. their, their net, net is their net was in the fifties going into that game I don't think it's yeah. gonna drop very much that's part of the reason I'm saying easy because like if they were in the seventies or something right now I would say yeah we're done here you know but yeah they're they. What the scary part is, I think, for state fans, right, is that what they need to do now is win the games that they can't lose. Which, you know, it's and always been really easy for NC State. Play now. They're the also thing. 55. State's 55 in Ken Palm right now, too. So it's like it's not terrible. It's terrible. not. It's, it's fine, but they have to win the games that they can't lose. And that's mm-hmm. not – we know that's not always given. Florida State's going to beat somebody. Yeah. Is Louisville? it Louisville? I don't know. I tend to think not, but it's possible. And anything's possible, right? Okay. I won't count gotcha. anything out. But there are other gotcha. ACC teams like Georgia Tech's net is terrible. Um, speaking speaking of the Yellow Jackets, um, they were in Chapel Hill yesterday afternoon. And if we go back to this time last year, you'll remember that Josh Pastner said that this Carolina team was going to be a Final Four team. It was a really, really good team. And everybody's like, what are you talking about? Like, everybody was in their feelings about Carolina under Hubert Davis. They hadn't really gotten things together. Julio was joking on the show this week. He's like, I just want to be in Chapel Hill just to see what Josh has to say about this UNC team going forward based on all the discourse that's been around the Tar Heels. I'll say this about North Carolina. Everything that we've seen to this point is easily explained, right? There's been a lot of hand-wringing. I know that Hubert Davis kind of set the tone early on. I think it was after the Gardner-Webb win where he talked about yellow flags. You look at that four-game losing streak, which, again, we've discussed. You can add a lot of context to that losing streak, uh, whether it's Armando Baycott. All four quad one games. like Good good opponents. Armando Baycott not being 100%. They'd be in the playoff Uh, if it were college football. That's a good point. That's a good point. So quality opponents. Losses, though, Armando Baycott, travel, all these things. So they get a week at home, and Hubert Davis talked about it on Friday, and they get the win against Georgia Tech. You know, Jillio likes to bring up scheduled losses like we talk about in the NBA and what happened at Castle against Virginia Tech you can view as a scheduled loss for the Tar Heels. I looked at yesterday's win as a scheduled win. I mean, had they lost oh, yesterday, then they, then the, then the, then you can start ringing the alarm bells. But yesterday was exactly what it should have been: a week at home against a bad ACC team that's not really going anywhere. You should be able to handle business. That's exactly what they did. I think it was a sixteen to two run before the end of the half, and that was a wrap. 
Yeah, and they the thing is, I think what's more encouraging, if you look at it, was like they didn't have to win ugly, and we've seen them have to win ugly sometimes against lesser opponents this year. Yes, and yes. they didn't have to do that. They, you know what they did? They must have read what I wrote last week. <laughs> I'm sure this is the only reason this happened. Uh, Hubert, they, Hubert Davis printed out your story, and he just put them, you know, all, in every locker. Well, room. to That's be fair, happened. I did stick up for them a lot in it because I'm like, listen, sure. they're high in net ranking still. They're still a, an asset for the ACC at this point because they're not going to hurt anybody, and they're even a quality win opportunity. Sure. A and sure. then like B, you know, at a certain point, we just have to realize it, none of their losses were all that bad. No reason to be super alarmed. But I did advise them perhaps they should consider getting assists. Like I've heard those were good, and that helps a lot. I don't know, <laughs> just spitballing. And you know what? They went out and did it. So good for them. The passing was so much better, like noticeably and obviously in the stats column. Like, mm-hmm. So I, th- I thought that that was something that we haven't really seen from them this year, even in a lot of wins, frankly. And so that's a, that's the thing they needed to change. They did. You saw RJ Davis play really well. We hadn't seen that in a little bit here. And yeah. I mean, that's important. Their guards have to play well. Baycott wasn't. I don't know if he was quite 100 percent or not, but he no, was- he wasn't 100 percent. He played, but he wasn't 100 percent. I, yeah. I just right now for me in the Tar Heels, I'm not saying they can't be a top tier ACC team. That's the expectation. They certainly have the talent to do so. Um, they came back for a reason, like we've seen in the past at UNC. And just so far, they're very similar to what we saw last year. They were a bubble team last year before they got hot, and the rest is history. Right? It's all part of the story. They have so to far- do some of what state has to do at this point is okay. not lose the games you can't. Which they did last year until they got hot. So they lost one they lost one or two of the games you can't, but they can't the thing is the games you can't lose will hurt you a lot more this year. I don't know that the ACC had a quadrant four loss on the schedule, but they got two now. It's funny. There's always a debate about whether or not loss can actually keep you out of the NCAA tournament. And I always make right. the argument that loss is – you're in like – literally, you're right. A loss cannot keep you out of the NCAA tournament. However, a loss can put you – You've got to have in, the wins, yeah. The loss can put you in the pool of teams that now becomes up for debate and they'll take more scrutiny. Same with for the sure. schedule. If your schedule is terrible – then they're also going to get into that pool. That's the thing yeah, that keeps I, North Carolina in a good spot because their schedule, like who have, I, I honestly am impressed with the way both Duke and Carolina have made their schedules, you know, especially in the last couple of years, they schedule very intelligently. They will get those teams in the hundreds to come in. And, and those are, those are good wins for them. They're better than playing these teams ranked like 300 or worse that were, that really kind of hurt you almost as much. They don't help you. Um, and that's why you see both Carolina. Well, that's why you see Carolina so high in the net really is because of the strong schedule that they've played. And that's, what's going to keep them alive in my opinion, beyond some other teams, but they still can't take too many of those bad losses. If they're not going to win a bunch more quad one games, because you're right. The loss won't keep you out, but if you don't have, Remember last year, it took them forever to get the quad one win. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. that's the thing that I think it was ideally, a Duke game. The Duke yeah. game, the Duke game for Carolina yeah. last year was the quad one win because actually, it. I went back and looked at the schedule because I'm trying to remember when we did it. But I'm sure if we went back and we watched the February 16th edition of the ACC Panic Room after Carolina lost to Pitt, I'm pretty oh, sure yeah. that's the moment I said, "Yeah, Carolina ain't making the NCAA tournament because I that, think that lost." Was the first moment I agreed with you that season. <laughs> yeah, because I think at that point, yeah, I think at that point, Ken Palm had Pitt ranked 195 at that point. Yeah. So and, and they dropped the 10 and 5 the league. They had no, and they had no good wins of note. That's why that Carolina yes. that Carolina trip to Cameron Indoor Stadium was such a big deal because as you mentioned it was their first quad one and that kind of I mean at that point everybody discussed it as all right you stamped your ticket to the NCAA tournament. Nobody was expecting them to go on the run that they did. Um so that's this is twice now that we're using Pitt as an example. Jeff, we swear we're not picking on Pitt. We're not picking on Hey, Pitt. I think Pitt's done a great job with the way that they've scheduled. Like, good for you for being mm-hmm. high up in net. Like, kudos. <laughs> you see the rest of the league? It's not. It's all in how you schedule. Like, don't yeah. schedule Merrimack or whoever. There are some teams I've seen on schedules that I'm like, that's a made-up team, but it's not. Tarleton. Mm-hmm. Boston College lost to Tarleton State. 
that's not good. You, you, that's, it's almost like, good. you know what? You're not allowed to beat, beat anyone now. They also lost to Maine and New Hampshire. You know what? You're, you're prohibited from beating anyone now. Wait, that's not, those aren't hockey games. Oh, did we lose Lauren? There she is. She's back. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of the ACC Panic Room. I think you and I both conclude. Don't worry about your basketball team yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. When we get closer to Christmas, though, we're about two weeks away from Christmas. Carol, Christmas next time. week's big for Carolina. That's an opportunity for a quad one. We'll see. We shall see. We'll keep an eye on it. All right. We'll see you all next week.